This demonstration is on an anatomical model, and it is for a side bent sacrum. Sorry, tailbone, <laughs> side bent tailbone. Okay. Now, for unknown reasons, the most common pattern, if a tailbone is going to be stuck in side bending, is the tip goes to the left. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate that in a couple of different ways. So these are the transverse processes of the first coccygeal segment. Okay, if I pull them down, you see that the thin, narrow oval top of it, and there is a fibrocartilage separating sacrum and coccyx. What amazes me is we don't know what type of fibrocartilage that is. And I would submit that it is a somewhat softer fibrocartilage. That's just my belief, um, but I can't find any data on that. All right. Now, so C1 has these lateral projections called tra transverse processes. The other ones are just kind of like blocks. And this guy has C1, C2, C3, C4. Some people have five. Someone had seven, someone had just one. There's all this variability um, in, in the anatomy. So if the tailbone is side bent, I have honestly never seen it go to the right. Okay, so look at what happens. The tip goes to, to the left. This is, you're looking at the back of the pelvis. So this is sacrum, this is left ilium, right ilium. So the person is standing facing me, okay? So, if the tip goes left, that is named left side bending. But please observe, this transverse process goes inferior. The left transverse process goes superior. So the way that I test it is I put my hand on the sacrum, let my middle finger fold over. Yep, that's the tip. So I'm going to bring my index finger to the right just slightly, allowing about a half an inch between and I lift up and then I hit underneath the transverse process of C1 and there's a distinct increase in the height on the left. That's called a deeper sulcus. So if the, if the tip goes to the left, then the left transverse process goes superior. And if I'm coming from below up, we hit the right one early and it takes longer to hit the left. It's not subtle. It's distinct. Okay. Um, when the, the sacrum side, the hello, coccyx, when the coccyx side bends, there is also a rotation. Okay. Now remember that, that, that Moses named for the, uh, with respect to rotation, it's named for the front of the body. So if this tip goes posteriorly, the front of the coccyx is facing to the left. Okay. And I would, and, and what I find is that with side bending to the left, the coccyx will typically rotate to the left. Okay. So first I'll show you the demonstration, the treat, the evaluation, and then the treatment for the side bending component. After that, I will show you for the rotation, and then we'll do that on a live model, okay? Um, so, I'm going to have the person, the skeletal model, pretend it's a living person, he's laying on his stomach. Head's up there, foot's down, feet are down that way, okay? Laying on their stomach. So, what I do is I put my hand on, on what looks like the sacrum and I fold my middle finger and I find the tip of the tailbone. So then I take my thumb to the left of that and I get a generous contact through the whole, as much of the tailbone as I can capture with my thumb, I, I do, okay? And then I may stack my other thumb and I test springing it, I test pushing it to the left and there should be a little bit of give. I hold it there, and then I add a little thrust, it's less than five pounds, and it should move a little further inside bending, but come right back to neutral, 
okay? Now, prior to that, I would have evaluated the sulcus on both sides, okay? And again, it would be deeper because the left transverse process would be higher towards the sacrum, okay? So that tells me immediately it's probably side bent to the left. And I come test, trying to spring it to the right, it doesn't move. When I come over to the right side, you can actually get a little bit more side bending. You can actually load it and then spring it and get some movement with recoil, okay? So this is, I, I, I don't concern myself with rotation at this stage of the game. I'm going to treat it. And so what I do is I contact as much of the coccyx as I can with my thumb on, of my left hand. Then I come over with my other thumb and I just load it and my direction of force is that way, to the right, okay? I sustain that for two minutes. Um, I'm just starting to experiment with trying to get inferior distraction. These are external techniques, and I'm just not sure if I can or, or can't. I don't know. I'm just starting to experiment. So we push laterally with both thumbs, and then I come hook with my index and middle finger. I'm just experience, experimenting with that, and I don't have any data for you. All right? Would love your feedback. Okay, so I, just, I, I, I keep that force sustained for three minutes. Very gentle load of less than five pounds. And you can practice on a bathroom scale. Um, then what I do is I contact the lateral ligaments, part of the sacrospinous, but, but my intent is the sacrospinous more so than sacrotubrous. So I take my hand over to that side, and I'm just gonna load it at about a 45 degree angle, or at least, um, or even a little bit more, okay? And so I'm gonna show you that on the ligamented model. And you can even use the heel of your hand on some clients, not all of them, but here goes thumb on coccyx. Sorry, we already did that. I already demonstrated that treatment, and now I'm going to come over, and my intent is to capture the sacrospinous ligament, so I'm going to make contact between the first coccygeal segment and lower sacrum. I just use the heel of my hand, okay? And then I just load it and continue to push at about a 45-degree angle. And I do that for three minutes. So we not only push it, but then we pull it to the right, okay? I've, I've never had one not correct, but sh you know, maybe on Monday someone will show up and maybe they have a, a developmental side bending that's made that way and it's not amenable to being fixed, or they may have a fused coccyx um, and not amenable to being fixed. But honestly, my record is very good at this. I want to... Um, Okay, so if we determine that we have now corrected the tailbone, you will know that the sacrospinous ligament tone now has spring, okay? We'll notice that when we load the coccyx on the left, that I can push it to the right, and it gives a little bit, comes to a stop point, and then I can thrust it. Um, so there is now mobility going that way, okay? So... Um, it's a very, very effective technique. It's the one that I developed. It's the one that I use. And um, after that, I, I want to concern myself with rotation. Okay? So now, person is on their, is on, well, they're laying on a tilt table. How about that? Or one of those gravity tables. They're laying at about a 45 degree angle for the sake of me demonstrating to you. Okay? I don't do that with my patients. I'm just holding this up that way so you can visualize what I'm doing. So what I do is I take my thumbs. I've already oriented myself to my anatomy, so I know that less than a half inch out here and up is a transverse process of C1. Then I come find the transverse process of, C, of uh, C1 on the left as well. 
they're now symmetrical. The sulcus is equal, okay? Now, I roll my thumbs up. So now my thumb pads are on C1 and I bring my thumbs in just a little bit. So now we only have about a half inch between my thumbs, okay? And it's not about how it looks because people can have developmental asymmetry and I'm simply touching a bone that's wider front to back. We treat movement. So if the tailbone is rotated to the left, my right thumb is gonna go deeper into the body. My left thumb is gonna be more posterior. Do you understand that? This is how they'll look. Then I do a spring test on the right side and it moves. I can load it and I can spring it. When I come to the left side, I can't load it. It just doesn't move. Remember, I'm only using five pounds of force or less. So if something's gonna move, it's that first joint. I'm not gonna be moving a sacrum or anything else. If I'm on C1, I'm trying to move, I'm trying to move the sacrococcygeal joint. And it doesn't spring on the, on the left. And this thumb nail is more posterior towards the ceiling. So that meets the definition of a left rotated coccyx. So easy to treat. So, so easy. Okay. I'm going to put him sideways now. Okay. So there's the tailbone and there's sacrum. Okay. To correct a rotation, I'm going to come from the, from the right side. I'm going to drop the heel of my hand onto the left. And then all I'm doing is trying to create this sort of movement. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. So I just lean on the first coccygeal segment at about a 45 degree angle. And if I want to be creative, I might try and induce a little bit of distraction. So I'm going to do a little inferior scoop motion. And that's going to be at about a 45 because I have to get contact with that first coccygeal segment. So here it is. I, I put the heel of my hand on the first coccygeal segment. I do a little bit of inferior scooping force. So the direction of my force is about 45 degrees that way towards their thighs. And then I just do a roll maneuver. And now my direction of force is 45 laterally, anterolateral, okay? And I sustain that for, you know, you know how long, it's three minutes, okay? That's how we treat a simple side bent and rotated coccyx. And I'm gonna demonstrate on the live model now. So we'll just keep filming and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, now you're lying